Hello, everybody, and welcome to Paleo Fridays. On this day, Friday, August 19th, I've got some exciting topics we're going to be talking about and some awesome prints to show you guys to kind of illustrate more of what we're talking about. I did some polls around the social media to see what would be a good idea for us to talk about today, which is usually what I do during the week to gauge interest. So if you see those posts, please share them around and add your comments to see what you would like to learn about, because that's what it's all about, you learning. And if we're not doing what you need to learn about, then what's the point? So please let me know what you're interested in, obviously relating to this field and this subject. And I will try to do my best to cover all these topics. Now, for today, we're going to be discussing something extremely interesting that it is impossible to cover everything in one of these 10 minute videos. But I'm going to do my best to cover the basics and uh, we'll do our best. So today's topic is the origins of bipedality or orthograde, which orthograde is the ability for something to stand upright. Now, bipedalism is nothing new in the animal world. We see birds doing it. We know dinosaurs did it. We know other animals that lived 265 million years ago were walking bipedally. What is new is seeing it within the primate or mammal line. That is what's new. And we, as modern humans, are really the only animals left today that walk bipedally, meaning two legs, one in front of the other, on the ground terrestrially. It's quite rare. It wasn't as rare 50,000 years ago when we had Neanderthals, Homo forensiensis, Homo longensis, and other hominins that were walking around. But of course, as time went on, as we became the only hominins, bipedalism became more and more rare. But how did it begin? Again, we're not going to be talking about the origins of bipedalism in a biological sense. We're going to be talking about it in an anthropological sense. When did it begin in the primate line? When did hominins walk upright? Now, there's a lot of controversy about this, but there's a few finds in the fossil record that help us illustrate just what happened. Here I would like to show you what is controversially known as the first hominin. His name is Tumai, of the species Sahelanthropus chidensis. He was found in Chad in northern Africa. Keep that in mind. Most hominins are found in eastern or southern Africa. So this guy was found way up north, almost near the Sahara. And this hominin is very controversial. Supposedly, there is an associated femur that proves that this hominin was not bipedal. But there's a lot of reasons why we believe, or if it is a hominin. Let's, let's start there. We don't know if it was a hominin. But if this creature, which does have very hominin characteristics, we can see shrunken canines, we can see... Especially, here's the gold nugget, the Ferena magnum is, it's hard to see because the skull is actually crushed and reconstructed virtually. But the Ferena magnum is almost where it would be for a full biped. Now, it is slightly more back, more posterior than we would assume in a hominin. But if there's something this early, we're not going to be seeing exactly what we see today. So why would we expect a perfect frame magnum? So there's a lot of proponents for Sahelanthropus stagensis to be the first hominin. And Sahelanthropus stagensis dates to about 7 million years ago. And if it's true that he's a biped, they, whatever it was, and this could be the first hominin in our fossil record. And if not, there is another possible hominin that was discovered around the year 2000 called Millennial Man. I don't have any of his prints, but the species that he was designated to was Auroran tungunensis. Excuse me. And we only have a few leg bones, but we do have the top of a femur. 
And the way in which the femur would articulate with the hip seems very fit for a biped. We don't have any cranial features, so we don't know where the frenum magnum was, and we don't really have any postcranial features besides these few fragments of leg bones. But it's quite possible, just based on that, that it could have walked bipedally. Now, we don't know for sure that bipedalism arose in hominins until about 4.5 million years ago, when Artipithecus ramidus was discovered by Tim White and his team in the... Uh, I'm blanking on which region in Africa at the moment. In the... Af- a far region, I believe. And they discovered fragments. Literally, just they, they scanned the ground and just went meter by meter, millimeter by millimeter, until they found all these fragments of fossils. And they put together this almost complete partial skeleton of what's going on. And it's clear to see that this hominin walked upright. It's quite plain. Now, it didn't walk like you and I do today. It had a divergent big toe, meaning his big toe came out like this, like our thumbs do. Very adept at climbing trees, most likely. So not a full terrestrial biped. Now, if we fast forward a little bit, we do see, of course, more species that are definitely bipedal. We see loose, the Australopithecus afarensis, which... We know for a fact Lucy walked bipedally. It's just undoubted. We know her species from Latoli. We have their footprints in fossilized volcanic ash that show us these creatures were walking upright. We know they were. Now, another example that I have, if we fast forward a little more to about 2 million years ago, is this guy right here. This is Australopithecus sediba. And there's a lot of important information coming out about this guy. Now, this is the type specimen and is known as Malapa hominin 1, and we also known as the skull in the rock, for as you can see, he's still deeply in the matrix. And I actually have something that is very special to not this hominin in particular, but what we believe is its mother, MH2. And what I have is her lower spine. Now, this is a rare, more rare print, I would say. And it's very hard to find these bones of any hominin. So the fact that we have something this complete from Australopithecus sediba is absolutely stunning. Of course, we can see one of the hips with the ilium and the iliac crest and the whole ischium. We can see this, the bottom of the sacrum, and of course the vertebra going up. Of course, they're not in perfect condition, but what are you going to do when it's stuck in the ground for 2 to 2.5 million years? But what this does show us is that the spine had curves much similar to ours, which would support the idea that they were walking upright and supporting their weight in a similar way that we do which is very important in a creature that is walking on two legs. So, of course, we can look at these fossils, and we can look at these 3D prints, and we can put together a story where we see what's happening. So who was the first biped? Well, there's really no way to answer that question without a time machine. The fossil record is going to show what it's going to show. And, of course, without further fossils, we are kind of left in the dark. We really need more fossils to discover what is the truth about this situation. And even then, we're not going to know. We're just going to be adding pieces to the never-ending puzzle of what is human evolution. And that is the fun. That is the best part of it. That is why I am so enthusiastic about this and sharing all this with you, because this is one of the sciences that never ends. There's always so much to learn, and it's about us. It's about you. It's about me. It's about your neighbor. It's about our shared human origins and our shared humanity. And I just want to remind you all that there is never a time where you can't learn something new. You can always jump in. Never stop learning. 
The moment you become stagnant is the moment your brain starts to tell yourself, it's time to go. It starts to deteriorate. You need to keep your mind active. And a great way of doing that is learning new things. Now, I think that's about all that we're going to talk about for today. I think this was a good introduction as to who was the first biped. Sorry, I don't really have an answer. It's something ambiguous. But I have presented a few examples and cases. And it's, of course, up to you to look into this more and research, as that is the goal of what I'm doing. I'm not here to provide you with every answer. I'm here to excite you and inspire you to look for the answers yourself. I want to make that understood. Of course, I'm always here to answer questions. Please feel free to email me anytime at worldofpaleoanthropology at gmail.com. I will always respond to emails as soon as possible, and I'm very good about responding to emails. Feel free to comment. Feel free to contact me. But most importantly, make sure you like and subscribe to these videos if you want to see more and turn on those notifications. More videos will follow. If you want to see them, just make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you all very much, and I hope you have a great weekend.